Well, welcome everyone. This is another exciting learning lab. And this one is a special webinar this week where I'm going to be covering some new advancements that happened that I've been working on for the past several weeks and months. Uh, for model time, we'll be talking about a new application that I spent several, uh, spent the bulk of last week building, which is called Nostradamus. And we'll also be talking about what's coming soon in model time. And I think it's pretty exciting. Um, at least I'm, I'm really excited about it. So we've got a lot of awesome content and uh, let's get started. So uh, the first thing up, what I want to do is I want to demonstrate to you what you can do with model time and with shiny. So when you combine these two skill sets, this is something that you can provide your organization. So I've uh, developed an application called Nostradamus, and you can see it right here. Um, this is something that utilizes model time under the hood uh, to build a bunch of different models um, and ensemble them together in order to, build, to produce a forecast. And we can see it here. It, it's, uh, I've already produced this forecast. I forecasted 36 periods into the future. You click this button, and, this, and it runs. Uh, it also has a, um, and it, it also lists the accuracies of your different models that are being utilized underneath the hood. And you can see uh, that here, the ensemble, the weighted ensemble, which has four models included, and the loadings for each of those four models and the accuracies that we're getting. So this one's getting about a 15% boost in accuracy by ensembling over the, the next closest, what I'll call sub model. So it's a pretty high tech app. Um, the idea here is that it works on almost any type of time series. So if I pick a different data set, and the one that we'll be working with today is the Walmart Sales Weekly. I'm going to load this data set. The old forecast gets swept away. Um, there's also a TS Explorer tab. So what it's doing is it's pulling in this Walmart Sales Weekly, and it's inspecting how many time series exist, how many different groups. And this will be the focus of today, which is working with time series groups. So this particular data set has seven different time series. Um, has Some of these time series have different seasonality. Um, they have outliers. Uh, and you can see and examine some of the autocorrelations that are in the different time series. Um, and you can really get with this TS Explorer tab a good sense of what things are in your data that you may need to, to look out for and what your data looks like. Um, so we'll go back to the auto forecast tab. I'm going to change this to 52 periods because this is a weekly data set. Um, and I'm gonna click the run the forecast button. Down here, what you can see is we're fitting uh, several sub models. It's making 21 different models right now. And um, what, what it's doing is basically running model time uh, on 21 different models. And these will be our sub models. It usually takes a few seconds to run. Um, and then what it's doing is selecting the best ensemble model now. So it's combining all 21 of those different models. And then it's refitting the final ensemble. So this is what we get. We get a, um, a prediction that looks like this. And you can see here the ensemble uh, weighted model is winning out. It's using profit with XG boost 80%. Uh, random forest 16%. XG boost 3%. Earth. 0.64%, uh, and then the rest of the models that it had built, it's not using. Um, we can zoom in on some of these different time series. So I'm going to deselect them, and I'll just zoom in on the first one so we can get a sense for what we're looking at. And you can see that it's got the forecast here. It has some confidence intervals, and uh, it looks like it's doing a pretty good job at picking out the different seasonality. Um, also, what it's doing here is if I select a different time series, uh, what it did was it forecasted all of these together. So the nice thing about this is this modeling approach that I'm using here is uh, it's very scalable. So we could do seven time series or we could do a hundred time series. And the, the amount of time that it takes to do more and more time series won't increase that much. Not like it would if you're doing an ARIMA model and running it through a loop where if each, if each forecast takes five seconds and you do it, you know, um, and, and you do 10 forecasts, that's 50 seconds. This one, it won't take that long. It'll take about the same amount of time for every single forecast. Um, so it's a more scalable approach and it's utilizing 
and leveraging some new model time features that I just released in model time 030, uh, which I'll be talking about here shortly. So it's pretty sick. Um, but the idea here, again, uh, doesn't matter if it's, so this is a weekly time series. I'm gonna load a different data set and I'll just click the run button. Um, this is a hourly time series. It doesn't matter what time series you're dealing with, whether it's hourly, weekly, monthly, or yearly, your, your algorithm, when you combine model time and when you combine Shiny, they, they um, are able to adapt and automatically forecast and do a pretty decent job. But you need to learn the skills and you need to understand how to do this. I'll talk about some of the techniques here in this learning lab, but also we'll be talking a lot about the time series course and the Shiny course, which is how you're gonna get the skills to be able to build this type of application for your organization. And um, my LL Pro members, you'll get a, um, a, a light version of this application. So um, this is an hourly data set. Uh, again, we've got four models that it's using, and these are the top four, and it's combining them in different proportions. And you can see here, this is what the forecast looks like. So it does a pre pretty decent job. Okay, so that's the demo. That's what you can do when you learn Shiny, when you learn model time, and when you learn how to forecast at scale. Uh, and this is what every organization that I know of needs. So it's very, um, very powerful. Um, okay, so we're, uh, before we get jump into the content for this week, I wanna talk quickly about a program called Learning Labs Pro. And this is the 46th lab in Learning Labs Pro. All of these labs are recorded. I put them into the Learning Labs Pro membership program. When you join, you get access to all of the previous labs and any of the new labs that I release and roughly twice per month. Um, I have labs that cover all sorts of different topics like TensorFlow, H2O, Docker, MLflow, Profit, the Twitter API, the Google Analytics API, and more. So um, every lab has tons of valuable bonuses. And when you sign up for this program, you get that two times per month. Pretty sweet. Uh, the bonus for today, what my LL Pro members are going to be getting is a light version of the Nostradamus app. So the, uh, the, the light version contains the, the framework, all of the groundwork. It has uh, three different models that are used in it. So the, the full version has 21 models. Um, but this version has three models. It doesn't have all the uh, kind of bells and whistles, but it gives you a great foundation that you can build off for your organization. And when you take the time series course, you'll learn the techniques and skills that it takes uh, that I applied when I built the Nostradamus app, the full version. So definitely check it out if you want to get the groundwork. Uh, you should definitely join LL Pro today. All right, agenda for this week. So we've got a jam-packed session here today. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing is talking a lot about the model time ecosystem, where we've come from, what new features are now available that power Nostradamus and the ability to uh, scale up our time series forecasting. I'll also talk about the roadmap of what is coming next. And this is something you do not wanna miss because I've got some exciting stuff coming. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll jump into a full code session. So we're going to be talking about this Walmart sales demand forecasting, which is the, the time series that I had forecasted with Nostradamus. Um, and I'll do, I'll run that real quick again. So it's this Walmart sales weekly load this, and this is the, um, the, the model that's running right now. We're going to be producing something, something similar to it in this lesson. So the Walmart sales demand forecasting, um, the reason I'm running it right now is I wanna show you what the accuracy is that we're getting through Nostradamus. And then when I go through the lab, what I'll do is I'll show you the accuracy that we get with the lab and you'll see how much more uh, we can, how much we can improve when we learn some of these advanced time series concepts that Nostradamus uses. Um, okay. So that is what, uh, where we're going. So let's start off with the model time ecosystem. So you can see three different hex stickers and these are actually three different R packages that are now available inside of the model time ecosystem. So there's standard model time, which, is, uh, which has been recently upgraded. 
There's also model time ensemble, which is a new ensembling package. And then there's model time resample, which is for time series cross-validation and resampling. Uh, this is a growing ecosystem for time series packages, and it's the top of the line, in my opinion. Um, okay, so let's talk about model time. What is model time? Well, model time is, is nothing that you cannot do yourself. It just takes a lot of the code that I was having to write over and over and over and over again uh, to be able to condense and consolidate into very few lines of code. So it provides a forecasting workflow. So all of the steps that you need to come through in your forecast, it helps you uh, build all of these models and then consolidate them and organize them into a step-by-step -step process where you can make your forecast on your test set, you can get your forecast accuracies, and then you can refit on a full data set. So once you know kind of how your model is performing, you can refit it on the full data set and then forecast forward. Uh, it unlocks several packages that um, were not previously available. So it unlocks the Tidy Models ecosystem for forecasting, which to, uh, to my knowledge, there hasn't yet been anything like this produced. But what Tidy Models does is it allows us to tap into all these machine learning algorithms like XGBoost, like Random Forest, Support Vector Machines, Elastic Net, all of, the, all of the primary machine learning algorithms that I'm using in Nostradamus to be able to ensemble, that's what Tidy Models allows us to do. Okay, then we also get access to Profit and the Forecast R package in a format that Model Time can just easily uh, use to build ARIMA models and build Profit models. All right, so what is new that I've just released in Model Time that allows us to do this forecasting? Well. Model Time 030 just was released here, uh, I believe a week or so ago. And what it allows us to do now is I had to make some, some key changes to it, but now what we can do is we can apply machine learning to more than one time series. And I call this panel data. Uh, it's like a, a panel data approach. So if you've ever heard of panel data, um, that's kind of you know, the way I think about it. But basically, it's nothing new to machine learning, but for time series, a lot of people haven't really experimented with uh, modeling, taking kind of one global model that models all these time series at once. And the, and the reason that they don't do it is because it's, it can be challenging to get good results. So you have to do a lot of different things in order to be able to make forecasts that are going to work no matter what time series that you utilize. Um, we'll talk a, a little bit about some of that stuff, but it's really the things that you learn in my time series course, and I'll talk about that at the end. Um, so what, what Model Time 030 does is allows us to forecast many, many time series at once. So we've got eight time series. It's only one model, though, that forecasts all of these eight time series. Okay. So that's the first part of the ecosystem, and that's the big upgrade that's going to allow us to do what I call forecasting at scale. Uh, there's another package called Model Time Ensemble, and this is something else we're going to go over today uh, and we'll touch on, is if you notice in this Nostradamus app, there's this Ensemble weighted model. And this is a model that I used Model Time Ensemble to create. And what it does is it takes a look at all of these different models and it provides a weighting using a, a proprietary algorithm, um, a little bit of intellectual property. It took me a while to, bit to figure out how to um, a good strategy, but basically it comes up with a modeling approach that weights these appropriately to give us the best odds of forecasting. So um, what I'm gonna do, I'll run this for 52 weeks because that's what I'm gonna be running in the test today. And what we'll do is we'll see how this, how this model here with an RMSE of 5,000 or so, we should get about the same. Um, but what it's doing underneath the hood is fitting a bunch of these different submodels and creating an ensemble. So that's what Model Time Ensemble allows us to do, is to create these weighted stacks. It also does model averaging, and it also does a, a thing called super learners, which is where we use like a linear regression or a random forest or an XG boost model as a way to, to figure out how to combine these different models. So. It's a very flexible package and it's something that is very cutting edge and it's also a competition winning strategy and it works really well for making Nostradamus. 
Okay. So uh, model time ensemble, uh, just real quick. This is the reason I'm able to get some very high uh, accuracies. One of the reasons is I'm ensembling. And uh, you can see here on this data set, I'm getting about a 14% improvement over the best sub model, which is uh, the, the best of each of these different models. Um, so it's definitely a good strategy and it's something that you'll wanna learn. The third package that was released here uh, relatively recently is model time resample. And what this allows us to do is figure out how our modeling algorithms stand the test of time. So this is an example of what's called a time series cross validation plan, which is where you take a time series and kind of break it up into different training or testing windows. And you want to see how your algorithm performs, you know, given this blue portion of data, how does it predict on the red data? Given this blue por portion, how does it predict and so on. And the strategy that model time resample uses is it resamples and refits your algorithms on each of these blue portions trying to predict the red, red proportion. So uh, in this particular example, if you had five models and, um, and you had uh, uh, six different um, training sets, what it would do is it would refit your models th your total, in total 30 times because you've got five models times six uh, tr uh, splits and it would predict the red portion and then what it does is it allows you to then see how that accuracy, what your average accuracy is. And this tells you some things about your time series models. It tells you whether or not um, it's gonna stand the test of time, how stable that model is over time, and so on. Because the problem is, is if you just do this once, which is what most people do, they just do it, you know, they'll take the, their, their training data and test it on the, the most recent window. That's, that's a good approach but this is kind of a belt and suspenders approach because it, what it does is it tells you over time how well you're doing. And it makes some nice plots so you can kind of see over different training windows how well, how well all of your algorithms do. So those are the three packages and that's the ecosystem. These are all taught in my time series course. Uh, it's an amazing course. Uh, there's nothing else like it out there on the market. It's cutting edge. It has everything in it from machine learning to, to uh, feature engineering to ensembling to forecasting at scale and even more. And we're gonna talk about what's coming next to the time series course. And also we're gonna talk about what's coming next to the model time ecosystem. I'm really excited about this. All right, here's what's coming. Model time Gluon TS. And what Gluon TS is, is it's a Python deep learning framework for time series. If you've never heard of it, you know, that's not shocking but uh, it's quietly gaining massive popularity, especially in the Python time series ecosystem. Um, and why is it doing this? It's because, it's, uh, because deep learning has placed really highly in several different competitions, most notably the M4 competition and uh, the M5 competition, the second place solution used uh, a deep learning algorithm as part of the, the, uh, the solution. So, oh, and also the Kaggle Wikipedia um, time series forecasting competition, a deep learning algorithm won that. So what Gluon TS does is it's built off of, uh, it's developed by AWS. So Amazon Web Services has a data science team that has built MXNet, Gluon, Gluon TS, and a bunch of uh, different other packages that are all related to this ecosystem called Gluon. So Gluon TS is the one that I'm gonna focus on. That's a time series one, but there's also a video one, uh, image, an image uh, Gluon, and so on. Um, what what uh, is really nice about Gluon is it's also built on top of MXNet, which is an ultra fast uh, package uh, of, uh, that's written in C++, and it's able to be used with, with both CPUs and GPUs. Um, so you, you can uh, really scale up your analysis using these. Um, what I'm so excited about uh, this deep learning fr framework called Gluon TS is that it opens the doors for us to be able to efficiently build deep learning models for our time series. So this means that all the benefits that you get with model time, which makes it super simple and easy to forecast in very few lines of code, 
you're now going to be able to have that with Gluon TS uh, when, once it's integrated. So here's an example here that I was working on today. Um, it's the uh, I, this is a function that I built in R, and what it does is it taps into the Gluon TS library, and I'm running the Deep AR algorithm. And here you can see the forecast that it makes. And basically, what I've done now here is um, been able to connect up to an environment that has Gluon TS running. So I can, if I want, I can set it up for GPUs, I can set it up for CPUs, I can set it up just like I, I can with Python, all from the comfort of R. So pretty sweet. Um, this is uh, one of the algorithms, the Deep AR algorithm, but I'll have more. Um, so, so NBeats is the one that uh, has subsequently really um, gotten a lot of uh, popularity. Uh, it was using the second place solution of the, the M5 competition, and it was also, it, it wasn't available for the M4 competition, but it was, it was uh, later run on that competition, and it got much, much, much better results than even the winning solution. So uh, the Gluon TS has NBeats incorporated, and Model Time will subsequently have NBeats incorporated. Uh, here's an example of that deep AR algorithm. This is with five epochs, and, and after running about 20 epochs, uh, you can see that the predictions get much better. And you can see kind of the, the benefits here. So at first, you know, it seems like it's getting the trend right, but now once you let it run for kind of the sweet spot, which is 20 epochs, uh, you can see that it's, it's really doing a, quite a good job at on this time series here. All right, so that's what's coming. That's uh, next for the roadmap. Super pumped about it. Now let's get into the code. Okay. So uh, for my LL Pro members, this is the code base that everyone is going to be getting uh, that's, a, that's a member of LL Pro. It looks something like this, where we've got, uh, these are the folders and files that we have. We're primarily going to be working out of this 01 Walmart sales forecasting.r file here, and that's where I'm going to uh, do forecasting at scale seven time series at once. We're also going to touch on ensemble learning, and uh, we'll go down through that in this tutorial. Uh, also, what my LL Pro members are getting are, is this app.r file, which is my Shiny app. So this is the forecast uh, many time series. I'm going to click the run app button here. And what we're doing right now is running the Nostradamus light. You can see it pops up right here. And we've got uh, Nostradamus light running. So you're going to get this. Um, it has the TS Explorer here. Um, it has, you know, some, some, um, it, it, all of the found work is, is laid for you to be able to build your monster, not uh, Nostradamus light or your Nostradamus app yourself. Um, okay. So that's what you're getting as a bonus. Uh, so definitely sign up today. Um, all right. So first things first though, we're going to be, uh, going through the analysis that is utilized to create the, uh, Nostradamus app. And this is a basic analysis. It doesn't go through all of the tools and techniques, but it, it'll show you in a few lines of code how you can quickly get up and running with model time and with model time ensemble. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna be doing is um, loading in some libraries. So I do have some dependency requirements. It's probably best that everyone uh, uses the development version of model time, model time ensemble, model time resample, and time TK for this um, I believe the CRAN versions are up to date, but I'm not 100% sure because I'm using all, only the development versions. So if you use the development versions, you're definitely going to be able to run this code. Um, the libraries that we need to load, so once you have in installed the development versions uh, that you need, then we'll be loading some machine learning libraries. So we're going to learn load tidy models. This gets us access to all the machine learning libraries that we need. Um, the, we're going to load model time, we're going to load model time ensemble, and we're going to load model time resample. Uh, the time series package that we're going to load is time TK, and uh, we're also going to load our core tidyverse library. Okay, once you do that, we're going to be working with this Walmart sales weekly data set, which looks something like this. It's 1000 by 17. Um, it does have a bunch of different time series groups. We can visualize those because we have this ID here that's a, a grouping variable. So if we group 
by ID, we can see that there is now seven different groups, and this is what the data set looks like. Um, we can also plot that using the plot time series function from the time TK package. I teach all of the time TK package in the first five mod or the first nine modules. It's the first part of the uh, forecasting course, so you learn how to do all of this. Um, we can visualize our time series here very quickly, and we can see what the each of the different time series groups look like, and that should look familiar because the application that is running right here um, has time TK built right into it. So that's what this is right here. Okay. So definitely learn time TK. It'll it's worth its weight in gold. Um, it will make you super powerful. Um, okay, the next thing that we need to do, so now that we see our time series, we know kind of what we're dealing with, what we need to do is we need to prepare our time series data. So we're going to be um, doing a, uh, uh, an analysis, which I call panel data, which is just what build one model to forecast all seven of these time series at once. Um, so how we're gonna do that, I'm gonna first come up with a forecasting horizon. So this is how many steps into the future do I want to forecast? Well, this is a weekly data set, so there's about 52, 53 weeks in a year. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to 52 weeks, and it's going to have now a variable that is saved over here, uh, 50, this forecast horizon 52, and that's what I'm going to be utilizing throughout my analysis um, to be able to set up my data appropriately. Okay, so we're gonna take our uh, Walmart weekly sales data set and we're gonna create what's called a full data set, which includes both the forecasting region, which is the future data, and it also includes the past history, which has all of the information here that's gonna be valuable to our machine learning models. So we're gonna first pare this down to just the columns that I need for this analysis. It's the ID column, which has my grouping feature the date column, which is the time stamp, and then it also has the value column, which is the weekly sales value that I'm trying to predict. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply some group-wise time series manipulations. So I'm going to use these, uh, I'm first gonna group on the ID feature, and I'm gonna use the future frame function to extend this time series. So we're gonna see the number of rows increase from a 1,000 to an additional 52 times seven rows because that's how, how many uh, forecasting horizon steps we have. So forecast horizon is 52. It's gonna increase each of these IDs by 52 timestamps into the future. Um, so again, this is a, a time TK function. You need to learn time TK. If you don't know it, stop what you're doing. Start learning it today. It's going to help you for time series. Okay, so we see uh, we're now up to 1,365 timestamps. So we went from 1,000, uh, 1,001 up an additional 364 timestamps. Okay. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is consolidate the IDs. So I'm going to run factor drop on all the IDs. And this is just to make sure that your IDs that are a categorical feature only have the levels that are included in your data set. So you run that and um, that just adjusts this ID feature. Okay. So I'm gonna save this now as full data table. And um, now I have the base for doing an analysis. I have a full data set. Um, I'm going to then split off into a training set and a forecast horizon. So this is something that's kind of weird that you need to do for your time series, is once you make your full data set, uh, you have to split it off into um, what, what I'm calling data prepared. So that's anywhere there is not N NAs in this weekly sales feature. So if I run this here, this will be my 1001. Um, if all goes well, it's 1001. So this is my original 1001. And then all of the, um, and uh, oh, and I can run uh, my TK summary diagnostics on this. And I can see, you know, what uh, data sets I have in here, what their, uh, what the time range is. So what I'm mostly concerned about is this time range. I want to make sure that they all start and end on the same day. And then my future tibble, which is uh, right here. Uh, I can see 
when I filter is in a weekly sales, this is the 364 that I had created when I extended with this future frame function. So I have for each ID, the date, and then I have a weekly sales and all of the weekly sales are going to be missing values because we don't know that yet. We need to forecast that. So I'm gonna save this as future tibble. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check out the summary diagnostics, make sure that they all start and end on the same day and they all have the same number of observations and it looks like they do. Okay, all right, so now that I have this split into the data prepared and the future tibble, I'm gonna kind of set the future tibble aside for a little bit and we'll, we're not gonna really need that until we make our future forecast at the end, um, but the data prepared um, is what we're gonna be dealing with. Also, just a side note, the, um, the data prepared that I have in here does not include um, many of the features that my Nostradamus app includes. So there's many more features that I include in this step here specifically to be able to um, handle uh, time series data and to be able to do what I call feature engineering. And this is really one of the, the main strategies that makes that Nostradamus app so powerful is because it includes some feature engineering steps in here. And I only teach these in the time series course. So definitely check the time series course out if you're interested in learning more there. Um, okay, so now that we have our data prepared, we're gonna split that up into a training and test set. We're gonna use this time series split function from the time TK package. Again, I teach it in my time series course. Uh, we're going to take our data prepared, look something like this, 1000 by three, and we're gonna use time series split to split it up into an analysis and an assessment set. So hit control and enter. And now I have this splits object here. And notice that it's detecting here that data is not ordered by the date variable and the resamples are being arranged. And it's also telling us that overlapping time series are detected and we're processing, processing these overlapping time series using a sliding window. So all of these time series that are in here, all, all seven of these are all being processed together. And that's one of the um, upgrades, one of the major upgrades, and I just did this recently to the time TK package um, that allows us to, to really be able to, to uh, understand our data. So um, what we can see here is we've got 364. I'm just gonna do 364 here by seven, and you can see that that's 52. We have 52 stamps for each of the seven groups. And then I see I have 63 uh, by seven here. So I'm gonna do 60, 637 by seven, and you can see I have about 91 timestamps of training data. Um, I usually like to have, uh, I actually usually like to have this a little bit smaller, but for the, this demo, it'll work. Um, I usually like to have about 20, no more than about 20% or so of the data in my test set. So right now we have about a third, so about 33%. Okay. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, create a preprocessor, and this is gonna add some of my engineered features that are, um, that are easy to do with, um, with time series uh, in, this, in this format. So I'm gonna create a recipe with my training data. So I've got my training splits here. I'm going to add in a, um, uh, some, a time series signature re uh, recipe which is gonna take the date feature and break it off into a bunch of different calendar features that we're gonna use for machine learning. Uh, we're gonna remove some of the features that are not important. So that's this next step here. Uh, we're gonna normalize uh, some of the larger variables, which is the index numeric and year. And then we're going to uh, convert the weekly feature into a factor. And then I'm going to dummy it here, or dummy all of the, all of the factors here. So when I do that, it gives me a recipe that looks something like this, which has several different steps here that are gonna be applied to my data. Um, I, if I wanna see what that data set looks like post-processing, um, it's gonna look something like this. And this is what we call making a design matrix from our machine learning data. So we've converted all of these this timestamp here into a bunch of different features here, like date month, uh, date week, um, and so on. And, and you can see uh, some of the other engineered features here. We've got the groups that have been uh, converted into ones and zeros. And this is so a machine learning algorithm can learn from this data set. Now we still have a date feature in here. We'll have to handle that separately. And then you can see the weekly sales feature is in here as well. This is our target. Okay. 
So with a recipe in hand, uh, we now need to make one more recipe. And what I'm doing is I'm using this update role and I'm gonna take this date feature, I'm gonna give it a new role called ID. And I'm gonna say this as recipe two. This is because recipe one, my model time algorithms all need to have a date feature. So any of my model time algorithms that come from the model time package, like profit, like profit boost, like Arima, they all need to use the recipe spec one. But recipe spec two, anything that comes from tidy models, like the Parsnet library, which has XGBoost, which has GLMNet and so on, they, they're gonna need to use this recipe two, which takes this date and gives it a new role. Um, and, and that's what we use this update role for. So that's really important. Um, if I use the summary function, I can now see that this date feature has a role of ID where previously, if I do recipe one here, so let me, let me copy this. So do recipe spec one, you can see that previously date is a predictor. That's what we need for my model time, but for um, my non model time algorithms, uh, we want this to now be an ID. So that's what we're doing. We're changing the role here from predictor to ID uh, for this date feature. All right, now we've got a recipe in hand, we've got a preprocessor, let's build some models. We're going to start with a workflow and we're gonna create our first one, which is profit with regressors. So we start with a blank workflow. We need to add a preprocessor and a model. The model that we're gonna add is profit reg it comes from the model time package. And what this does is just applies profit with regressors to our model. So we can see here when I run these lines of code here, we now have profit reg that's been added. Next, I'm gonna add a preprocessor. We still need to add, we still have preprocessor none here. So I need to add a recipe. We're gonna use spec one because that comes from the model time package. And you can see I've added my preprocessor here. And then what we can do is fit the, uh, on the training data. So this is gonna give me a fitted workflow. I'm gonna hit control and enter. It takes a second to run. It runs the model time algorithm uh, for profit. And you can see here that I've got a model here, profit with regressors. And these are this is some of the information that it's used for that to create that model. Cool. The next thing that we need to do, we need to make more models. So it's not good enough just to make one model. You don't just run one model on your time series. That's a recipe for crappy models. If you want to do really good things for your organization, you need to experiment. I can't stress this enough. This is what model time really excels at, is helping you experiment and organize your experiments. So we're gonna add an XG boost model. Um, so we're gonna start again, same type of, of formula here. We got a workflow, we're gonna add a model, we add a recipe and we add, and then we fit it. So we're gonna do that same thing here at workflow. I'm adding a boosted tree model. Oh, and here's one of the things too. Something I do in Nostradamus is I create many of these models. I don't just stop at one XG boost model, but I create many models. And you don't know which combination is gonna work well. So you need to make more than one, one model. And that's one of the things that uh, I, I teach you how to do in uh, the time series course. So um, we're gonna add this model here, which just has, uses all the factory defaults. Um, we're gonna give it spec two because it comes from Parsnip. This is not a model time model. This is a machine learning model from Parsnip. So we give it recipe spec two, which has the date feature um, given a new role from predictor to ID. And then we fit. So we're gonna run this section here. And now what I've just done is I fitted an XG boost model. So I can see that here, I've got a uh, preprocessor here and the model has been fitted and it's now ready to predict on some data. Okay, so we're gonna do, let's see, we'll do um, a couple more models here. I'm gonna go a little bit faster. This is a random forest. Um, it uses recipe spec two here uh, with engine ranger, which is from the ranger package. We'll do a support vector machine uh, from the Kern lab package. And this is again, a machine learning model, so we're using spec two. And then we're gonna do profit boost, which is the XG boosted version of profit um, that, I, that I include in my model time package. This uses recipe spec one because it comes from my model time package. Okay, so we now have one, two, three, four, five different models here. These are gonna be our sub models. So this is where we pick up with model time, 
uh, what we're doing is we're creating what's called a model time table. It looks something like this. The advantage of using model time and what makes it so special is it helps us organize some of our information. So we now have all of our different uh, models in here. It's given it a model ID and it's also giving it a description. It tells us you know, a, a little bit about of information about what's contained in this model. Um, something that's simple like that, that just takes extra lines of code and time for you to organize, it just does it automatically for us. So I've saved that as submodels tibble. Um, what I can do in my model time workflow is, is first do some calibration. So these were all trained on the training data set. And what I wanna do is I wanna calibrate, which, which tells me how well these do on the testing data set. So I run through this model time calibrate on my testing splits, and then I can use the model time accuracy function to quickly get the accuracies here. Um, and just a, a quick survey here, it looks like this model is doing pretty good. This is profit with XGBoost seems to be our best. Um, and you know, each of these models do a little bit differently. Okay. Um, the other thing here is we can then start to visualize. So I've, I have my calibrated tibble. I can pipe that into model time forecast with my new data being my testing data and the actual data, which is going to be for comparison purposes is data prepared. One of the new advances of, uh, in this function for model time 030 is we get this keep data function. And what this does is it tries to attach your uh, previous data here. Um, so you have now the grouping variable, which is this ID that gets pulled in. Um, so we can group by ID and uh, it makes it really efficient for us to plot the model time forecast, which is uh, going to be plotted right here. It looks something like this. Now they're all stacked on top of each other. Um, if I don't want that, I can do dot facet n call. Uh, so the number of columns in these facets, I can set that up for two and it'll make it just slightly uh, easier to, for me to visualize. There we go. So we've got two different columns here. And you can see now how each of these forecasts are, um, what, what they're producing, what, what it looks like. So um, I can see two, I can deselect certain ones, and I can see how each of these different models, for example, uh, produce results. I can see that this one looks a little bit low. I can see that this one looks like it's doing a pretty good job and so on. Um, and then I can also see that some of these other models uh, might do a little bit better. Like Ranger um, seems to be predicting a little bit high uh, on some of these models and so on. Okay. So now I understand a little bit more about my time series and that's how easy it was to take one, two, three, four, five different models and predict it on seven different data sets. So pretty cool. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do uh, in my model time workflow is I'm going to take my sub model submodels that have been calibrated and I'm going to refit them on the full data set. What this does, and this is what I normally do, is I take the model that was trained on this training data set and then I refit it on the full data set, which is all of this data in here. And then that way it usually gives me a better forecast. Um, and then we just, if we want to visualize what that forecast looks like into the future, we just run and run that refitted tibble then through the same process. Now I'm going to do dot facet underscore n call equals two and make us a little bit wider so we can see the forecast and we can see here we're getting some crazy things going on um, so this is one of the things that i've um, seen quite frequently from profit with regressors is it tends to overfit in my opinion the data so you see how this is getting uh, some crazy results. Uh, it's because uh, underneath the hood, Profit uses a linear regression model to analyze these regressors, and it doesn't do a very good job. Linear regression is something that um, is a no-no in machine learning because it doesn't do any sort of regularization. So you can get results like this that are pretty crazy with Profit with regressors. The rest of these models are doing okay, um, the best of which I believe is this Profit with XGBoost. Um, it seems to be doing the best. And that's because it doesn't use the profit with regressors here. It rather uses the XGBoost to analyze the regressors. And XGBoost is good because it regularizes the data um, and it makes a much better forecast here. Okay, cool. Um, so we're, we're making some progress here. 
Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about model time ensemble and some of the advances here for making these forecasts uh, at scale using um, what I call ensemble models. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my first my sub models tibble and I'm going to uh, I want to create an ensemble. But first, I, I recognize that I don't want to use this profit with regressors. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that from this model time table. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this function called ensemble average. I'm just going to make a basic ensemble. And this is the most basic one that you can do is just an average ensemble using type equals mean. Um, and what this does is it takes, um, it creates a, a, a specification for a ensemble model of your four models here. And this is the sub models that it will use. So we save that as ensemble fit mean. And then we put that into another model timetable. And now you can see here, we've got ensemble mean four models. And you can see here, we've got ensemble and that four represents how many, the number of models that are underneath. So um, model time just knows that you've got an ensemble now and it's now starting to organize that. Um, the next thing we'll do is we'll take our ensemble table and I'm going to combine it with the sub models table. Um, so I can compare these. And then I'm going to run model time accuracy on the testing data set. And right there, that easy, that easily, I have my ensemble here and I can see how it stacks up against the rest of these. Now it looks like it's doing a little bit worse. This 8,521 RMSC is what our ensemble here is getting. Um, our best model here is getting around 8,160. But keep in mind, I told you, I didn't do everything I could in this analysis. There's more to be learned. And just to prove that to you, if we take a look here back at the auto forecast that I did here, and I did, I just ran this on 52, then this is the same data set here. This is the RMSC I'm getting from my ensemble weighted. I'm getting around 5,778, which is about 40% better. Um, than what we've got here. So we've got 8,521. Uh, so what do we say? 57, uh, what was that? 48, uh, 57, 78 divided by 8521 is, yeah, about 33% better. So sub subtract one, about 32% better. Um, so there's a lot more that you can do, and I encourage you to try it. Um, so uh, this is some, the power of some of the techniques, and this is why feature engineering is so important. This is why model experimentation is so important. We only have five models here. You know, there's many more that we can use. Um, the challenge is, is trying to figure out which models we can use to get us the best results, which combinations, how to combine them in the ensembling. Uh, once you get into ensembling, and that's another strategy that I use, is I don't just go with an average ensemble, but I try um, some kind of cutting edge techniques. And then uh, in the feature engineering area up here where the I'm doing the data preparation, I have a lot more features that I'm adding in. And I teach how to do all this stuff in the time series course. Okay, um, next, next what we need to do is we need to refit on the feature data, our ensemble tibble, which looks something like this. So it's just this one by three, which has our ensemble in here. And I'm going to run it through the model time refit. Uh, it takes a second because it has to refit all four of the sub models. Um, so that's why it took a second right there. Um, it's just refitted them. And then now what we can do is make the future forecast. Notice I'm using, I'm finally using that future tibble that I created at, at, in the beginning now. Um, I'm using that to create my forecast. And I, again, I'm using model time forecast keep data equals true, I'm grouping by ID, which is this ID feature here, and then I've just made all uh, seven of those forecasts, just with one model, my ensemble. Okay, cool. And just like that, you now have learned a little bit about model time. Uh, but there's a lot more to be learned. Uh, the time series course that I've been talking about uh, has all of these techniques and a lot, lot more baked into it. Um, time series is something that does take hard work and a, lot, a little bit of effort 
to, to learn. But once you learn that, you become super valuable to your organization. There's things, there's a lot of stuff I did not cover in here. So what you still need to add to your arsenal, and if you want to get that 5,700 RMSE, this is what you need to do. You need to do feature engineering. You need to figure out how to add these different features and what's going to work well. And you need to learn when to apply these new features and when not to apply them. So uh, features that are particularly important, lags, rolling features for your series. I cover all of these in modules two through seven in the time series course. Uh, I also have, uh, I say 30 plus models. That's what you build. That's what you learn how to build in your, um, in the time series course. Modules nine through 12 go over how to build all these machine learning models, ARIMA models, and so on. Uh, module 13 is on hyperparameter tuning, stabilizing your models. And module 14 is on building better models using ensembles, which is stacking with super learners and weighted ensembles, which are a little bit more sophisticated and better, um, and usually give you better accuracy than just the, the average ensemble that I use in here. Okay, so the idea here is when you do that, you can then take this application that I have here, and this is my challenge to any of the students that are in my time series course, take this app and make it better. I want to see who can make the best application by modifying the, um, the, the forecast analysis in here. So I have the analysis in here in this observer part of the function. You can see we go down through and we do um, the same splitting, the preprocessor information. Uh, we're creating three different models here, and then we're making a submodel, and then we're going to average them together, um, and so on. So when you do that, you can make this application. And this is the light version that all of my LL Pro members are getting today. You run this um, 52, run the forecast, and it forecasts your Walmart sales weekly. So when you do this, you should be able to get a better model. Um, you should be able to do to start to do better than than what I've got here, um, and that's what I want to see if any of my LL Pro members can do that and how and how much they can improve their RMSEs. Um, the other thing here is that we have um, so that so that's the demo. Um, definitely check it out. Uh, but if we want to talk about your transformation which is the kind of where you can go, your top end. Um, the idea here is that it's, it's pretty simple. Businesses need Nostradamus. Like, there's no question about it. If you can provide this application to your organization, you're gonna, your career is going to take off. And I'm not just giving it away to, to you guys. You, aren't, you guys aren't getting it at this. Um, it's, you know, it took me a while to build it. But if I just give it to you, you're not going to learn anything. So what I want you to do is I want you to take this Nostradamus light application and try and get it as good as you can get it. And um, I'll give you guys pointers uh, if you're in my LL Pro program um, and I'll point you to which sections of the time series course that you can leverage in order to do it. But that's my challenge to you if you're an LL Pro. I want to see you try and improve it. Um, so you've seen what model time can do. Uh, you've also seen what when you combine model time and shiny what happens you know it's this awesome idea here that you can become super powerful to your organization by just combining these skill sets so there's a big change that's going on out there and this is something that everyone needs to recognize this is why data science is blowing up it's because organizations they need to make decisions at scale they need these applications to be able to do that businesses can't scale reports they can't scale excel files they can't you know, there, uh, there's no other way to, to scale this stuff. Um, and they have access to all of this infrastructure now. So cloud and servers like AWS and Azure. Um, and you can solve these problems for that, for your business and become super valuable in the process, but apps are what they need. So this is what businesses need. They need Nostradamus. They need your help in order to be able to build these applications that leverage these powers that allow them to forecast their data at scale. So how are, you, how are you gonna do it? How are you gonna get there? Well, here's the key. This is the fast track. This is a program that I've been developing over the past three years that will activate your transformation. So it begins 
with the R track, and then we also have Learning Labs Pro. So this, this lesson that I'm giving out here is going to be stored in my LL Pro, but this is the end game. What you need to do is you need to solidify your foundations, and it's a step-by-step -step process. So if you're on the spectrum where you're just starting out, this is what you need to hear because we all start at the beginning where we don't really know a whole lot about data science, right? We know that it's really powerful and we want to be able to enhance our skill sets to make us more marketable and also to make an impact on our organizations. So how, do you, how are you gonna do that? Well, the R track is the key. It's a three-step process. So step one is you start with, in the beginning of the R track, which is taking the 101 course. And what this is doing is it's building your skill sets by teaching you repetitively how to analyze data, how to, um, how, how to uh, do data wrangling, how to visualize data, how to be able to create your stories so you can explain them and communicate them to your organization. And it's like climbing a hill. You start by doing projects and you kind of work your way up. And once you're at the top, you're, all, you, you're getting pretty dangerous. So once you have learned data science, then you need to learn how to build applications. So this is the shiny component. So you now have the model time component down here. You need to move into the shiny component, which is actually productionalizing your analysis. And it's really simple. Once you learn shiny, um, you just need to learn how to uh, utilize shiny in order to be able to leverage your analysis. So you basically convert an analysis that you create over here and you can convert that into an application that leverages your analysis. So that's step two. And then once you have that, those steps down, the Learning Labs Pro program, which is amazing, especially if you've already got the 101 course done, I'd say that that's the minimum prerequisite, is you get continuous learning. You get learning on things that the core curriculum does not touch. So that's things like financial analysis, that's things like working with APIs, that's things like working with Python and R together. Uh, it's all of these things that will continue to accelerate you long after you're finished with the program. So that's how the system works. Uh, it's kind of two different parts. You got the R track and the Learning Labs Pro. So we've already talked about Learning Labs Pro. You're more than welcome to join that. But if you're at the beginning of the spectrum, that's what I want to focus on a little bit more right now. So uh, these are a few examples of my success stories. And these are students that are in my program that have really gone on to do some amazing things. So this one is Jennifer Cooper. She's recently got a job as the VP of Strategic Analytics at JP Morgan Chase, where she's doing amazing things. And if you wanna know what it took in order to be able to get in the door there and be able to get uh, excite them enough to hire her and bring her on board, well, it's very telling what she says in here. In her testimonial, what she said, is that during her, uh, her interview process, she used the business science problem framework to complete a project using R Markdown. Now, they didn't know that she was doing R Markdown. They just they got a PDF as part of the interview process, but she went step by step through my business science problem framework, and she gave them a finished, a polished, finished product that impressed the hiring manager so much that he was willing to fast track an offer. And this is, this is Jennifer who was the previous organization she was working with, she kind of felt like she was had plateaued there a little bit. So she was looking for some better roles and she was able to knock it out of the park by getting a strategic, a VP of strategic analytics role with a very large company in the financial sector. So great job, Jennifer. Um, way to use the coursework. Same thing with these stories. We've got Masataki who got a, a job at the top management firm. We have Z here who uh, was able to improve patient costs uh, or patient care while reducing costs at the same time using some of the tools in the 101 course. Uh, Mohana here, he got a 40% raise just by showing how much more productive he was. They, they had no idea, you know, they didn't care if he was using R or Python, but he was learning R and all of his Python counterparts were taking so long to uh, analyze the data and, and um, he was pumping out project after project. It was, and it really helped him accelerate his career. Herb works at Florida Power and Light down in Florida. And uh, he was able to, after the first three months of his coursework, build a shiny app that really impressed his uh, executives and his organization. 
Uh, and then finally here, Raj. So if you want to learn shiny, there's no better success story than this. He literally won the, 20, the 2020 Art Studio Shiny competition. Uh, and he used a lot of the tools and techniques he learned in the Shiny Developer course. So no joke, the, the coursework works. Um, so you just need to buy into the system, and if you uh, if you commit, then it will help you big time. So these are this is again kind of the trajectory. We all start here at the 101 course. We move our way through advanced machine learning and time series, um, and you, this is where you learn the business science problem framework. This is how Jennifer got the job at uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, and then you learn the machine learning and time series together, which is uh, really what it takes to build an application like Nostradamus. Um, and then here at the end, you need to learn Shiny. So it's not good enough just to learn analytics, but you have to know how to deploy it. And that's what these two courses teach you. So there's the, the intermediate Shiny and then the advanced developer course. And this is where you learn like AWS, Docker, Git, how to develop full stack web applications. And this is how you're able to, to and this is how I was able to build Nostradamus in under a week um, I built this entire forecasting application uh, and it actually probably took me like three days ish. Now don't tell your, don't tell your company that when you're building this, but it's going to make you super productive. A um, little bit more about the courses. If you want to understand the curriculum, the one-on-one course uh, has a ton of content and uh, in week six, you're doing machine learning, clustering, regression, um, but the fundamentals are in weeks one through five where you're learning data manipulation, text, time series, categorical, um, doing visualizations and so on. And then at the end, you do two projects. So that's really important because you need to be able to kind of solidify and, and, uh, and build reports and show how you can present your information to your organization. Uh, the 201 course, this is the one that had the business science problem framework that Jennifer used to get uh, her job. Uh, we do the machine learning. The entire course walks you through a project and you have to do an, a return on investment. You have to do machine learning. You have to do data preparation, understanding the data, storytelling, and that sort of thing. And you use cutting edge tools that your organization can get immediate value from. Um, then you have the time series course, which is the newest edition. And this is the one that teaches you all the tools that it takes that I implemented in order to be able to build this forecasting app. Um, that is what you learn in this, in this course. So feature engineering, super, super critical machine learning. You learn every algorithm under the sun and then deep learning, which is coming soon with model time and glue on TS, uh, where we're going to be implementing deep learning as well. So it's the most cutting edge time series course on the planet, um, right here. Uh, and then there's the shiny course. So this is the first shiny course, which has you building two dashboards, uh, where you're doing predictive pricing app and, and that uses XG boost and then a sales dashboard with demand forecasting, which also uses XG boost. And then you have the more advanced course, which is really what it takes in order to build Nostradamus. So if you want to build and deploy this, you need to learn AWS, Docker, Git, bootstrap, MongoDB, shiny server, all of the things that it takes in order to, to um, handle multiple users in an application. That's what this one teaches you. Okay, so I've talked a lot about the courses. Um, what I wanna do, and I'm excited to give you a 15% off coupon that's available right now. Um, so if you're interested in joining any of the courses or you get an additional um, benefit if you join the R-Track bundle, uh, you can get it for 15% off and David's just provided the, um, in the chat, the course link and, uh, keep in mind too, is that no matter if you're, um, if you are, are ready to dive full in, we have a one-time purchase available, or if you're looking to budget, uh, spread, spread the payments out over time, uh, we have an 18 month plan as well. And uh, the, the idea here, though, is that this is an investment. You invest in this, and it pays you dividends in terms of career acceleration. If you're looking to transition into data science, if you're looking to add to your skill sets, if you're tired of where you're at right now and plateauing and just getting 3% raises, this is what will help you take your career to that next level. This is how Mohana got a 40% raise in, in a span of a year. Uh, this is how all of these students are doing good, good things 
for their companies and it makes them really, really powerful and really, really valuable to their organizations. And that's how you get rewarded. So uh, that's um, the offer. Uh, I can't wait to see some of you in the courses. Now, David, uh, I'm ready to handle some questions. All right, let's do it. Um, just really quick, um, I know Matt was laying out all the details for the courses. A couple of people asked about jumping straight to the time series. We highly recommend that if you're new to R or even if you think you're intermediate, definitely take a look at the course descriptions because there's a lot in each of these courses, there's a lot involved and you may think you're ready for the time series course and get in there and um and we don't want you to be frustrated so yeah. e each course has prerequisites and uh the only one that doesn't have any is the 101 course which is right here but um the time series course which is this one right here the prerequisite is 101 and we lay that out in the first week so you're more than welcome to try it you can always go backwards but if you try it and you feel uncomfortable and it, you don't feel like you're, you know, you're quite ready for it, then pick up the one-on-one course. It's yeah. You're, you're not, you're not going to regret that decision one bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're, they're made to build on the skills from the previous one. So definitely, definitely uh, consider that. Okay, yep. cool. So Mohammed asks, uh, does model time work with irregular time series like intermittent data, uh, intermittent demand? So. Um, yes. And to prove that, let's take a look at Nostradamus. So I'm going to go to a database which has missing data. And this is Olympic running mail. I'm going to load that in and it looks like this. So give it a second to update. I'm going to take the smoother off. Oh no, we've got missing data in here. And these are, this is a time series that um, tracks the Olympic running times for men. And you can see in these years here, 1936 and 1948, we've got a, a span here where we didn't have Olympics and that's because of some world wars that were going on. So how are we going to uh, forecast this? Well, model time doesn't really care if you have missing data or not. Um, what it cares about is, is the values of the data that you do have. And that's the advantage of using an algorithm like XGBoost. So let's try and forecast this. Uh, we're gonna do the next six Olympics times and we wanna see um, what is gonna happen there. So uh, it's, gonna, it's running. Um, the other thing you can see here, let's see, uh, the anomaly plot won't show up. So it does have an, have an issue there with missing values and that's just because of the the anomaly algorithm. Um, some ACFs here, we can see that there's definitely information in there that, that seems to be autoregressive. So probably gonna be able to forecast this. Um, okay, so auto forecast is finishing up. It's refitting the final model. And right there, we now have the, um, the forecast here. Um, someone asked about, uh, Saeed asked about imputing values. Mm -hmm. there was no imputation done this um those values get dropped if they're missing they get cut and um and, and that's what i do internally in nostradamus that's that's something that that's a good question um i don't think i do that in the light app so that's one of the techniques that i use to get to these um these really good forecasts uh you can see our ensemble here is getting pretty good accuracy 10.3 versus the, the closest um uh, the, the closest sub model, which is XG boost, um, and so on. Okay. So yes, model time does handle intermittent demand. It does handle missing data. It handles everything. Yeah. There were a few questions on that. So that's a, that's a great one. Mm -hmm. Um, Siavash asked, uh, how would it handle group slash hierarchical time series data? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it turns out that the data set that we've been dealing with is both a grouped and hierarchical data set, which is Walmart Sales Weekly. And that's the advantage of dealing with, um, and actually I hit 26 observations, but um, what we did was 52 in the, in the lesson. But what happens is, is when you create one model that works for all of your different time series, your time series, your algorithms are able to learn 
from the other models. And they're able to see if there's correlations between time series. And that's, the, that's essentially what happens when a, you have a hierarchical data, data set is you might have overall sales, you might have sales by department, you might have under that department sales by a, a, a different product or a different area. And you can include all of, all of those time series as groups. And when you model them all together, it handles it just right. Because you see that these are learning from the other groups. Um, so yeah, like these, these time series here are all learning from each other. So that's how it handles hierarchical data set is when you build one model that models the globally, the, the entire data set, uh, locally, you end up getting pretty decent results. Wonderful. Uh, more, more tease asks, uh, do you cover inference in your course as well as the forecasting? Um, so the time series course is, uh, an inference would be covered in the feature engineering because mm -hmm. you don't, you can't, um, build good features unless you really understand how your time series, you know, which, which features, um, seem to add information. So from an inference standpoint, what I do is I show how to build the different diagnostic tools that you need, like the ACF, like the seasonality, like the, um, uh, there's a plot time series regression function, which is absolutely phenomenal for helping you understand what information is in your time series and how you can utilize these different features in order to be able to extract information from it. That's also, it turns out, is, uh, helps you explain the time series. If there's a seasonality component, you know, that component will rise to the top in your plot time series regression. Um, if there's, you know, something that you're including like an event, uh, and if that event doesn't help you, or if that event helps you, um, it'll give you different um, regression coefficients and, th and that sort of thing. So it becomes more explainable when, you, um, when you're going through that process of understanding your features. Okay, great. Uh, William asks, um, do you have a step to explore model instability slash overfitting? Um, so exploring model instability and overfitting, that would be in model time resample. And that's what I recommend. Um, I would check that package out. That is, uh, it's fantastic. It's brand new. And um, what it does is your time series cross validation. So you can actually slice up or chunk up your time series and see how that, that, that model will perform over your different um, time regimes and windows. Okay, great. Let's just take one or two more here. Um, let's see. Is the Shiny app, uh, Akil asks, in the Shiny app, there's a weighting models ensemble. How, how are these weights made? That's a secret. <laughs> I knew it was a secret, but it's, it's a good question. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, it's a weighted, <laughs> weighted ensemble. Yeah, well, the thing that yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a technique and um, take take the uh, take the two or three course. You'll learn how to build ensemble models. When you go through that course, if you need to learn how to build that model um, and you can't figure it out on your own, I'll point you in the right direction. Awesome. All right, let's see if we could do one more here. Um, uh, Matthew asks, is there functionality within model time to work with cross-sectional panel data, similar to your example of, of a global model by country panel, but with multiple uh, vintages of data? Yeah, just do the exact same thing I just showed in, this, in the lesson, and that's how you do it. <laughs> We've been working with panel data all, all day. So you just add whatever your groups are into the same time series and stack them on top of each other. And that's how you, you, um, you analyze the panel data. So you just run it with one model. Now you have to make sure you, you select the right models that you, that are going to give you good results. And that's, that's how you do it. All right, great. Uh, there's, there's still some other questions out there. Sorry guys, we can't get to all of them, but we really do appreciate you coming and sticking around for the, for the whole presentation here. We hope you got some value from it. And um, I'll th uh, throw the link to the courses in here one more time if anybody's interested. Uh, also, check out the details for each course. If you click on it, you'll see um, all the modules. Uh, so you'll, you'll get a sense of what's involved. 
And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll be announcing the next um, uh, learning lab uh, in about two weeks, and we hope to see you on that one. All right. And until then, definitely check out Model Time. You will love the package. Um, it is cutting edge. It's really um, got all of the bells and whistles coming to it. And we have Model Time glue on TS coming here soon. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll continue to develop it. And all of the information, if you want to learn Model Time, it's contained in the course. So definitely give the course a look. Uh, you'll love that as well. Be the best money you've spent. Perfect. All right. Thanks again, everyone. We'll see you soon. All right. See you guys. Bye -bye. All right. Take care.